Hello there, this is uh, Victor from Premier Plasma CNC, and uh, today we're going to be going over how to uh, use VCAD, SheetCam, Mach 3, and uh, the specifics of how to use the router for those three programs. Um, as we'll start for right now, we'll go into uh, VCAD and jump right in. Go ahead and close that. And uh, we'll go ahead and make a simple drawing that we can use for a uh, she can to route out and uh, make in our Mach 3 screen for later. So for right now, we're gonna just make a simple sign. We'll do that one and uh, let's just do some simple rectangles within this box as well. Okay, uh, once we have our drawing, we will go ahead and uh, save it. I always recommend to save it in case, you know, something happens to the file, so. Call it, um, test router. And uh, make sure when you're making your drawings, you always wanna export these. You can do R12 where if you would like, you could always do R14, but R12 is always the standard that we most often use. We'll go ahead and save that on our desktop. And once we have that, we'll go ahead and uh, move on to SheCam. Let's go ahead and open up SheCam. And uh, SheCam, we're gonna go up into our file and uh, we're gonna select import drawing. We will select our uh, test router file that we made in VCAD. Go ahead and select inches in the bottom left corner. You can see in SheCam, you already see that you have the inside as yellow and the outside as red. So SheCam does a pretty good job of recognizing what's inside and outside cuts. Uh, the next step would be to go up into your options and uh, go to machine. Your machine options, you're gonna wanna select rotary cutting. This will include, you know, milling and routing, which we will be using uh, to create a new tool and also the operation. So as you can see, we already have our selected. And uh, you'll see here under the tools, you'll have the option to create a new rotary tool. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get to call this uh, router. Let's see. Uh, I'd say we're gonna do about maybe quarter inch. So since that's the tool we're gonna to be using, and you wanna go ahead and select what you're gonna be using as a mill, router, drill. Um, we recommend always to use mill. You can see it's already assigned tool number 15. Uh, the diameter, that's gonna be your diameter of your tool, and since it's quarter inch, we're gonna put in 0.25, boot length. This depends on, you know, the type of uh, router bit that you got or end mill. Usually these end mills are either half inch to about an inch or even sometimes uh, three quarters. So we'll just say that this is about a one inch end mill flute. Tool length offset, uh, usually, you know, if you wanna do that, I would personally just leave it as, as is zero. Uh, next step would be depth per pass. How many, uh, or I should say, how deep you want it to do each depth per pass. Since quarter inch, you, you generally you don't want to go more than a, what the size the diameter of the end mill or router bit you're using. So we'll go a little bit under quarter inch. So we'll just do a 0.125, which is about eighth of an inch feed rate, how fast you want it to go. Since we're gonna be trying to mill out, say softwood or MDF, a good feed rate for this would probably be about, you know, maybe 80 inches per minute. Plunge rate, a good number would be about maybe 10 inches. Pretty quick for uh, soft materials. A little bit slower if you're doing a uh, harder stuff like hardwood or even uh, plastics. 
And uh, ramp angle, that's if you're wanting to go at an angle as, instead as opposed to just going straight down. This is if you're maybe doing a profile cut and you wanted to, uh, you know, ramp down to an angle of like maybe 30 or 40 degrees. Uh, since we're using soft material, it's usually not a problem for us to just do a ramp angle of zero. Spindle speed, since we're going to be manually controlling it with our uh, VFD, you can just set it as uh, pretty much the predetermined 1000. Okay, and this step will show you what to do to create an operation for a profile cut. Uh, as you can see here, I selected already our edit contours. So we're gonna want to go ahead and select our uh, edit contours and uh, click, right click on the outside profile cut. And uh, when you do that, we wanna select a new layer and uh, name that. Uh, we'll just name this one as uh, outside. And then for the inside, we want to go ahead and move that to a different layer. We'll just move that to layer one. Okay, uh, next thing to do is to go to your operations. And uh, since you always want to do your cut on the inside first, we'll go ahead and select layer one. And for that one, we always want to do inside offset. We'll go ahead and select, as you can see, we already have tool 15, which is our mill or end mill router diameter of 0.25. Uh, start depth of zero. We want to go ahead and uh, cut through half inch since we're going to pretend that our board is half inch thick. Depth per pass, 0.125, about an eighth of an inch, as you can see here, it gives you a little animation or picture, as well as uh, how many times it will take for it to cut through that half inch board. Uh, finish allowance, we'll just we usually leave it at zero, but you can always leave a little bit more if you need to. Say if you want to sand it down and you know, it gives you a little bit of extra material to work with. Uh, pretty much since we're making simple uh, cuts, we can just go ahead and we'll leave it to zero. Feed rate, how fast we want it, it's already predetermined by our tool. So 80 inches, plunge rate, the same thing was predetermined by our tool settings, 10 inches, ramp angle of zero. And our variable speed or spindle is our thousand, but we uh, manually uh, operate that with our VFD. So we press OK. OK, so you can see here Sheet Cam has already made our contour operation. And now we have to select another operation for the outside profile cut. So we'll go ahead and uh, click on our layers and do outside and for our outside layer. We will do outside offset since we want to cut from the outside of the line. Save tool number 15 with the quarter inch end mill. We'll keep all the same settings and we'll go ahead and press OK. All right, and as you can see, uh, Sheet Cam has now completed both operations and shown us the green line showing that we have our uh, drawing that will be milled out. Accordingly. So I always recommend to do a simulation as this helps with, uh, you know, saving material and time. Let's go ahead and uh, bump up the feed rate. So you can see it's doing about four cuts. You could always uh, kind of, if you have a wheel on your mouse, you can go ahead and click on that and it gives you a better view from the side. Kind of shows you the material thickness and how it does the cuts. And also a little bit better to see that end mill as opposed to just seeing a circle. You can actually see it as a cylinder this time. And right there does our profile cut. Go ahead and speed that up a little bit more. It also gets, you know, positions of the coordinates, X, Y, Z, as well as approximately how much time it will take to complete that. Okay, so it says it took about 330 seconds, which is not bad. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, 
right click in the zoom to fit job. Once we are satisfied with the simulation, we will go ahead and uh, move on to our options. This is just to ensure that we have the right post processor. Uh, go ahead and move on to the tab that says post processor. Uh, just go ahead and uh, just double check that you have on the drop down list the right one selected and ours it shows Premier Plasma CNC floating head. On yours it might show the latest version with the date code of 2023. Uh, just to ensure that you have the right post processor. As you can see ours is selected Premier Plasma and we'll go press OK. Once we have that selected we can go ahead and uh, run our post processor. We will save it. Test routers you can see we've already done that before and I have the dot tap file. Now we will go ahead and open up our Mach 3. Uh, go ahead and select your profile. Plasma CNC 2023. Go ahead and press emergency stop. And uh, on this you will want to go ahead and either select your load G code button here or go down to file and load G code. Either option works. Uh, preferably, I always use this one since it's easier to find. Uh, we'll go ahead and find our tap file. All right, and uh, we'll just uh, adjust our machine so that way we can uh, start on the bottom left hand corner of our material. And uh, we'll go ahead and zero it out. And uh, we'll just clean this up a little bit by uh, pressing regen toolpath. You can see it kind of cleared up our uh, preview window on Mach 3. All right, so uh, once you have your uh, machine zeroed out and uh, ready to start, you can go ahead and uh, turn on your VFD for your router, let it up, let it get to uh, up to speed. And once you're at the right RPMs, you can go ahead and press uh, cycle start and let it run. So you can see here the Mach 3 will give you a preview window of what it's uh, doing the cutout. So we'll just go ahead and let that simulate that and uh, we'll move on from there. Now that we uh, let that complete the file, uh, just go ahead and double check your work and uh, that should be it for the router. Thank you for watching.